How's it guys? Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today we are doing the Bowen Wilkins CT Custom Theatre Range. As you guys would recall, I did do one before. That was the bigger one, the CT 7.4. Um, 7.3 sorry these are the 7.4s these are the 7.5s and down below which i'll show you then i think they're out of view now is the 7.5 in walls but we'll be using them in ceiling this is going to be going into my um, new cinema that i'm building it's going to be a bowen wilkins cinema these will be doing front stage these will be all the surrounds and those will be the ceilings Subwoofers for now are not going to be Bowen Wilkins Custom Theatre. I am going to use the 4 DN12s from here on the new Moran's Cinema 40 and I want to try the 4 sub configuration. I want to see if they can give enough base to properly pressurize a cinema. If not, then we will go for the um, CT15 and subs. But I first want to try this out. So I'm busy doing the cinema now. So just before I needed the speakers, um, I thought let me quickly run and do a quick unboxing because it does not help me um, putting them in and I uh, have skipped the whole unboxing thing. So I will show you the whole build as well. I'll go and take some photos as I go now. Um, I am far enough along to mount these now and then I should be done by tomorrow um, and then have it up and running by the weekend. So let's get into these, um, show you what they are like. So, packaged very well. Let me just flip this so you guys can see. There you go, we got your grill in a box. We got your bung plugs. Even got speak on connectors if you guys need them. You have your Bowers manual. And which what I like is we have hardware to mount them. Do you know how little custom install theater speakers come with hardware to mount the speakers it's as if um when you're buying normal retail stuff they sort of baby you and all the stuff is in there but as soon as you go custom install i think they sort of think you're big enough now to do your own thing and not to worry about mounting hardware so this is always a nice surprise to have the mounting hardware in the box so mounting hardware speak on connectors manual and then the grill let's get the grill out let me show you guys what the grill is going to be like on these i will not be using the grill because we are going behind screen so there's no use for it Got your Bauer and Wilkins grill, magnetic, um, and then we have Bauer and Wilkins logo on there. Very nice little grill, which we will not be using. Uh, Gotta put this to the side, I'll box it up again now. So let's get to the speaker itself. These are quite hefty for uh, on-wall speakers. Okay. okay, so again, nicely packaged, very nicely wrapped. So they do not get damaged. Although these are always, all the custom install stuff is a very ruggedized type of finish so they are very hard wearing okay there we go well no, it's upside down let me turn it around okay so you have your two mid-range drivers these are all the new um custom install 7 series speakers s2 so this is basically the same drivers as on the 700 series of bowen wilkins speaker they got this cap to protect the tweeter which i will leave on while we are installing it's a 
very nice move to not damage that. You have your two mid-range drivers and your two ports that you can seal up with the bunk plugs. I will do that because um, I always feel it gives a tighter base. Um, where are they? I want to show you guys how you fit them. Actually, very easy. These also have a little sensor piece if you want to take it out. But I will be plugging up the port completely. So they will go in like so. Now it is a not completely sealed cabinet, but good enough. Um, back of the speaker, very basic. Your hardware mounts there to mount it onto um, some wall plugs that you've put in the wall. You have your binding post speaker connectors, which you can do normal wire, or you can take out those and they accept banana plugs. So yeah, these are the CT7.4s. Next, I will move on to the CT7.5s, which will be the surrounds. Okay guys, so up next we have the CT7.5. These will be all the surround speakers. So four of them. Let's dig into them. Cabinet size is the same. On all of these actually cabinet size is the same. It's just the amount of drivers that differ. Which for surrounds, oh, you, can, you can go anywhere you want. But these are more than sufficient. I don't see the extra need to spend more on surround sound speakers. Um, exactly the same packaging Ugh, exactly exactly the same as on the previous one we did so i am going to just take these out move them to the side and just get to the speaker so i can show you guys the speaker roll all exactly the same put the box on the floor yeah slightly lighter than the previous one as you would expect but still for a surround sound speaker it is hefty bolts like an absolute tank i didn't do a knock test on the previous one i'll do on this one just so you guys can see how solid these things are as all proper theater speakers should be listen to that absolute insanity oh and on the other one i didn't show you i'll show you now at the bottom we have mounting holes if you do stand mount them so you can securely mount them to a stand and it's all this black industrial finish same tweeter protection on top now we have one bit base driver and the two ports at the back the same terminals as you had on the other one exactly the same mounting all the same mounting same spacing all of that while we have it out again i'm going to fit the bungs because i prefer the seal Okay, so that is it for this one. Let's move on to the ceiling speakers. Okay, the ceiling speakers. These are completely new to me. I've never seen these. This is a first. Something which I found very interesting on this is, so this is the 7.5 S2. On the Custom Fiat, you also get the 7.5 S2 in ceiling speaker. Um, I'm sure performance-wise, they're all going to be more or less the same. The same as of the 7.5 um, surrounds we're going to be using, all the same drivers, tweeters, etc. What I found interesting is these actually price less than the ceiling speaker. How's that possible? There's more going on here. Um, there's actually a back box that fits onto this speaker. Um, so, this for me is a better buy. Let's get into it. Let's see what we are getting. On top. Uh, 
few more goodies in here. So let's see what we have. We have the manual. We have an aluminium mounting plate with aluminium fittings, which we will figure out shortly. I'm just gonna put them to the side. This is, I'm guessing, the box that goes in, in the wall. And those are going to be the supplied fittings that go onto this. Already, from a normal ceiling speaker, this is, mu this is much nicer. Um, why it's cheaper, I don't know. Pro tip, grab it while, grab it while it's hot. Um, let's get to, oh, okay, so bump plug. So again, we can seal the port, which we would do. Let's actually put the box on the floor. Get the speaker out. So it comes in two sections. This top section. This is going to be the grill. I'm guessing it's going to be painted um, magnetic grills which you can paint as usual on custom install. There you go. Magnetic and it comes white. And then you can spray this the color you want. In my case, it will be black. This is... Uh, this is a template. This is a template and also magnetic. Um, very cool. Oh, that's the cutting template. I think this is for when you are spraying it. All the instructions are on here. I'll read this shortly. I'm not going to waste your time with this. If there's anything I missed, I will just mention it when we do the whole cinema. So I'm going to put this to the side. Now, no, no, the speaker actually has, this is the back box for the speaker. How cool is this? It comes with its back box. So this is the hardware that, so this is going to be inside the ceiling. Um, there's another plate template there. These are the clamps that will grip onto the ceiling as you tighten them and pull it down. And then there's a terminal there where the speaker plugs in. A whole lot of hardware on you, in here. Um, very cool. Again, for being cheaper than the ceiling speaker, I am pleasantly surprised. So let's get to the actual speaker. Nice foam protection at the back here. Now this is nice. You can actually see all the inner workings of this. This is very cool. I'm loving this. This must be some of the nicest in wall that I've seen and packaging is so nice. Normally with in walls you sort of why am I paying this much but yes there's a lot going on here. Let's drag this out. I'm gonna come closer. Let's first show you the front. Nice matte black, your mid-range driver, your port and your tweeter, also a protective cover over that and the Bowen Wilkins logo. At the back you have your magnet, here's the port where it actually goes in, um, and a little curve there, um, there's your crossover design, and guessing somewhere, oh there is where it plugs into the box itself, oh so that actually plugs straight in from there onto there, no wires, just straight plug. This will go and sit in like that. This is very cool. This is very nice. I am pleasantly surprised with this. And then the box also covers and protects your drivers, which the ceiling speaker would not have. So again, for this to be cheaper, I'm really loving this. This is very, very cool. Okay, guys, so that includes... Uh, that, that's... Um, <laughs> okay, guys, so that is my unboxing of the Custom Theatre Bound Wilkins 7 Series S2. Um, I'm going to crack on with this installation. Um, I will be back to show you the end results. And let's see if this can beat the THX system. I do not know. We will see. Till the next one, guys. Cheers. Bye.
stand on the platform with the SVS feet and I move around. See the platform moves. There, there's give, the rubber foot absorbs whatever I am doing. Um, so completely isolating from the floor. Same with this one. And these are the other two I made with the feet with a rubber and stuff attached, but they do not perform like those do. So just a little demo to show you the difference on the isolating feet for the subwoofers. Okay guys, so this is just a little video I wanted to add into the Bowen Wilkins room. I'll add it into the whole video of this room. Um, on the isolating platforms I made for the DN12 subs, I could not fit the feet to them. Um, it looks like you need to go from the inside and I don't want to modify the subs in a way where I can't sell them again. So these are isolating platforms. I had three sets of SVS feet left. So two I did of the SVS feet and two I tried my own way by doing a stainless steel leg with a rubber sandwiched in between the top, the middle and at the bottom. I have some felted pads, but already just as I'll add in now, as me standing on these platforms and the way they move, these just don't have the movement that this has. So again, the SVS feet for a win. For anyone thinking they are snake oil, these are amazing. I'm going to put them in place now and I'll actually test the performance of them with the subwoofer going and where I noticed I need these. I watched John Wick chapter 4 the weekend in that beginning where he punches the bag um, that bass rattled the room so I want to watch that scene again without changing anything except for the isolation um, platforms and then I'll also add in the performance difference if this I think this may, might make a slight difference but these are obviously absolutely phenomenal um, and there's no stock on these now so I need another set uh, and I just sold a set last week actually wish I kept that set um, but okay so that is it on this I'll add it into the room um, next I'll be doing what the Moran Cinema 40 does in this room and I'll also showcase the new Bowen Wilkins room how's it guys welcome back so here we are finally in the new Bowers and Wilkins custom install 700 cinema it's amazing um i have this quite dialed in i still need to sort out a few things like hide some of the wiring um because the layout changed slightly but this room i love so what i want to sum up quickly is the differences between these three systems and for me it's the free system sort of that you would go to when you are entering home theater and you don't want to absolutely kill the budget that is the clips thx that you saw in the previous video it's the miller and chris miller and chris 150 system that i used to have in here and it is the bauer and wilkins ct 700 series that i have in here now i just quickly want to address every i get a lot of questions why did i change from the Miller and Crystal to the Bauer and Wilkins system. Nothing against the brand. I absolutely, I love MK and I still love MK. Just sometimes um, some of the dealers that know you deal with some of the importers and it's not Miller and Crystal directly. It's whoever you have dealing with the product on this side um, and you do not always see eye to eye. So I did a change of brands. Um, if anyone still wants Miller and Crystal stuff, I can get that for them. But I'm not going to have that demo room available anymore. This is now Bowen Wilkins. It is my own personal choice. Um, so, that out of the way, let's get back to the differences between these systems. And I am biased in no way. No way, shape or form. I am biased on nothing. This is my own personal opinion and what I feel these systems do differently because they are all more or less in the same price, but they are completely different systems. So the THX system we have running on receiver only, and that is the big boy Denon A110. This system, there was also the system running on the Miller and Crystal. The only difference is we had the Parasound power amplifier, which is still here. And this is running the five main speakers in the Bowen Wilkins room. 
Um, for processing and the rest of the power in here, we have the new Moran's Cinema 40. Um, I'll do a completely different video on that because I feel it is a video on its own, but it is running in this system. Um, so yeah, instead of having the custom install subwoofers, like in the clip room, I have the custom install subwoofers. On the Miller and Crystal, you get the custom install 15 inches as well. I opted for the X series subwoofers in that room. In this room, I sort of did the same thing. You get the custom install 15s. Um, they do come at a bit of a premium. I might opt for them later, but for now, I try to do something more cost effective and I am more than happy with the outcome. I went for four DN12 subs, the ones I did in my previous video. I moved them to this room now. Pro of that, you can get four of them for less than one big PB16, X15, custom install 15s, custom install THX. You can get this for much less. And is it worth it? <laughs> I think that's also a video for another time. I need to completely address everything that that does differently. But in a nutshell, yes, it's worth it. It does have certain small minute drawbacks, which I will address in that video. It's too much to cover in this video. So for now, let's just go over this layout. Custom install fronts behind the screen. Our own acoustic transparent screen. Custom install four surrounds. And the custom install bowers in walls that I have for in ceilings. That I'll add a little video in on how epically cool those are. I'm going to use them on much more of my installs. So this is actually magnetic. How nice is that? So that comes off. And then on the inside, when you're done, there's the terminal where your speaker plugs in. And then it slots in there. And then just two screws here. And they spring loaded to load your speaker. These are for drywall. Um, but yeah, how cool is that? Just for how, just thinking of everything. Even small little pieces like this, I just figured out now, you'll see there's a plate there. I just made another gasket to fit the ceiling better. But then the other side that's open, obviously for you doing drywall and something. But then this end plate they give in the box, now I know what it's for, that you can put in there. But it's actually sealed, it's acoustically sealed. So small details, really, really impressed. And this is proper aluminium piece. Um, so what these rooms do differently? The clips. The absolute presence that the clips gives you with those two subs and the horn tweeters, it gives you a wide dispersion. It gives you epic impact on the bass. Just being two subs and being in the front, you can feel it in your couches. It is an amazing experience. Um, the surrounds on those, I feel, need a bit more directness. They're great. They're absolutely great. They do fill the room. But being of a bipole design, the surround does not come directly at you and it sort of throws it around in the room, which is good and it is also bad because sometimes in a scene you want a bit more direction in, in the surrounds and they can get a bit lost in translation, you guys know what I mean. Come to the Bow and Wilkins room, this system is alive. It gives you spatial awareness much larger than the room you are sitting in. That comes mostly due to the surrounds being directional and something about these surrounds. And I noticed that in um, Homation's Bow and Wilkins room as well, incorporating much of the same kit, the surrounds is mind blowing. It's beyond the walls, but it's also close up. I have not experienced the surround sound as Bowers and Wilkins does it. So for me, that takes the cake. I should have actually had my board here. Um, I might, I might, that's a good idea. I'm gonna get my board. We are guys. back with the board. Um, let's put this into uh, three columns. We'll call this THX. Uh, THX being the clips, Bauer and Wilkins, and we will do a MK. Okay, 
So let's put this into different categories. Let's say, okay, so these systems are all more or less the same price, guys. Um, but this has four less expensive subs. It has a more expensive power amplifier, which was on the MK as well. So I would say actually the MK would be the most expensive system out of these systems. Just because the subwoofers are that expensive, are as expensive as in the clips, but it has the added power amplifier. But for, for shits and giggles, guys, we are more or less in the same sort of price range here. So let's not go a bit more or less in forward on, on that. It's just a power amplifier that's making the difference, which was also present in the MK system. And it doesn't change it by that much. So let's go on to what these do good. So let's go to what we all like, base performance. Which of these three systems have the best base performance? Um, I would say, let's do the first one. We say by, um, B. Man, my writing is so ugly. And also very awkward position here. Yeah? Base. So, THX system. I will call that base a 8. Eight for bass, it has an absolute fullness in the sound, it does shake the couches, it is immense. Um, Bowen Wilkins bass, I would actually call it a nine. The four subs on the new Marantz just gives more dimensionality to the sound. That again coming back to would you rather take four lesser subs or two, one or two more expensive subs? I would take four lesser subs, although they mustn't be cheap subs, they must be good subs like the DN12s. So that for me a nine. The MK base, I would say, I'm gonna call it an eight as well. Those two rooms are very on par on base, the Bowers is a bit more. Okay, so the next, let's go on surrounds. S for surrounds. THX, that one is lacking for me a bit. I will do a 7. Bauer is an absolute 10. The spatial awareness and the surrounds. Epic, epic, epic. Among the best, if not the best I've heard. MK, somewhere in between at a 9. Um, then, front stage. Let's go for the front stage. This will be your front stage. The dialogue, everything that comes from the front. Um... 80% of your movie actually and these are all basically very much on par so I need to explain the differences here um, clips is actually I would think that was the brightest but it's not it's not it is a very neutral open air airiness in the sound um, the Bowers was actually more forward sounding so I had to tame that down a bit but once calibrated in absolutely amazing so i would say clips airy exciting bowers and wilkins alive the sound is very much alive it is it's in your face but not too in your face i think alive is the best way to describe it mk precise um accurate neutral so that being said if you guys are getting where i'm going i would say both, I would say all of these for me on the front stage get a 10. 10 on all of those, just being different characters. So if you guys are looking for one of these systems, if you want something that is neutral and natural sounding, MK. If you want something that is alive um, on the top end, very alive, again on the spatial awareness of the surrounds, it ties in nicely. So then I would go Bowers and Wilkins. If you want to fall in between these two and have an accurate, um, neutral, but live and fun sound, THX. All of them, a 10 on those. So we have bass, we have surrounds, we have front stage. Let's go on Atmos performance, heights. Let's call it heights. The THX, I did not have the proper THX speakers in there, so I can't really call it's on that one so yeah i'm going to say in a just because i can't make a call on those i had my speakers in 
Um, so I can't call on that. On the Bowers, again, 10. I used the 7 Series in walls instead of the 7 Series ceilings because they actually work out cheaper. And you get a back box and you just get more options. Um, I'll show a video I did completely when I assembled those on the floor. I'll do that separate for you. And then on the MK, I was never really, I never really felt the heights as much as I wanted to. This will be an 8 for me. Um, those IC95s are a bit expensive for what you're getting. They are very good ceiling. But if you need to compare to Bow and Wilkins, or even the THX, I would say the THX might win this because it's the most expensive, bigger speaker that doesn't always win a competition. So, but when I get those, I will revisit this. Um, so in a nutshell, that is it. So if we had to add this up in points, um, I can't really do that because we have an NA on, on the heights. Um, guys, so read into this as much as you can. That's the three different systems. That is what they do good. But let's get back to the one at hand. Um, I will go around. I will add some pictures of the room um, as the layout is. And then I'm going to do a little demo of this room. See if you guys have headphones or good speakers. If you can hear the way the panning goes around, etc, etc. Okay, guys, I'm going to be running a few, a few of these here. Um, don't know if you've seen the performance on the JVC N7. This is it as well. Brilliant projector. Um, so I'm going to do a few for if we get flagged, but I can't do movies. So I'm doing stuff like on the demo discs that have not been copyrighted. So let's run into this one. Just want to grab, see where are we are volume wise. I'm going to give it a nice volume, but not too much. I think that is good. Let's go. Let me stand in the back so I don't affect the surrounds at all. Here we go. called Night Lights. Hope you enjoy it.
uh, I hope you enjoyed those demos. I actually forgot about that nightlight demo. It's a very good demo. Um, lots of heights, lots of eeriness, good LFE. I'm going to keep that disc in for a while now to have that back in my demo list. So I hope you can experience that, guys. Standing at the back again, this system is absolutely bonkersly epic. What takes this for me above any of the other rooms is the heights, the surrounds and the heights. Um, something away about Bauer and Wilkins does that. I mean, amplification always the same. Layout is the same. Just these being directional and not bipole. Um, bipole has its pros and its cons, but definitely I think the directionality has a bit of a different flavor to the mix. But guys, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. This room is available for demo. Anyone that has not experienced a custom installed Bowen Wilkins system, you are missing out. You need to experience this. Um, next, I will cover the Moran Cinema 40 in a bit more detail. Um, we'll use some of the same demos because it is playing in the same room. But I will talk about that in the base management in a bit more detail and how I find that in this room. Till the next video, guys. Cheers. Bye.